pet friendly. I was standing in line to check into a Texas hotel when I noticed the customer in front of me wearing a t-shirt that read, strangers have the best candy. This particular customer also had his tongue hanging out, leaking saliva onto the floor. His testicles were in plain sight and his tail swung from left to right. He was wearing a bib that read, talk to the paw, so I don't think he cared one way or another. A woman eventually returned from the lobby counter where she had grabbed some complimentary doggy treats and fed them to her companion. When the hotel clerk greeted the woman and dog, the woman insisted on a luxury suite with a king-size bed. The line between pet and bestiality was becoming increasingly murky. I guess it should come as no surprise that pets can now check into hotels and in most cases get a better room than me. As time goes on, it seems more often you see pets where they normally don't belong. Restaurants, movie theaters, adult video stores. In America, people love their pets so much they drag them everywhere they go. I'm baffled by the type of person who has a desire to take their pet with them to a place like the Cracker Barrel. It's not that I have anything against pets but it's a bit unsettling to see a dog at a Burlington Coke factory trying on outfits with his owner. At a bookstore once, I saw an owner's cat go over to the philosophy and religion section and proceed to leave a piping hot mountain of feces. There's a metaphor here, I thought. Call me sentimental, but I miss the good old days when dogs were used as guards and trained to attack strangers. When I was 22, I worked at a middle school in San Antonio, Texas. I woke up at 5 a.m. every day to catch my bus. My neighborhood was notorious for its stray dogs. There was one pack of dogs in particular that were vicious. Every morning I had to walk past them, and if, and if I was quiet enough, they would stay asleep. However, if they heard me walking by and woke up, all bets were off. They would usually bark at me, but if they were in a foul mood, they would begin to chase me. I would have to run for about 10 blocks before they gave up and left me alone. Eventually, I developed a little strategy and began to carry pieces of name brand ham in my pocket. And whenever the dogs began to chase me, I would throw the ham in another direction and I'd be okay. The strategy became expensive to maintain so eventually I switched to a generic brand of ham, but the dog's palates were too refined for the cheap stuff. I tried bologna, and when that didn't work, I just switched to rocks. Nowadays though, instead of a good chase, dogs are forced to go to etiquette school to learn proper manners. That or they just stay cooped up watching dog TV, a television channel exclusively for dogs. My family had many dogs, but growing up, I preferred a duck as a pet. I won my first pet duck at the local carnival in much the same way that one wins a goldfish. I was handed a plastic ball, I threw it into a bowl of water, and the next thing I knew, I was handed a duck. I named him Psyduck, and he enjoyed life for about six months before he swallowed some pebbles and choked to death. Eventually, I got another pet duck and named him Psyduck too. I had this duck for about a year before he suddenly had a seizure in front of me and died while laying on my stomach. I buried each duck separately in a Nike shoebox and placed them underneath floorboards in my home, vowing to never get a duck again. I read a story recently about George the Duck, a creature known for begging for chips at the original Mexican restaurant on the Riverwalk in San Antonio. George was reportedly grabbed, beat, and strangled by two unknown men. They dumped his lifeless body in the river. I could maybe sympathize with beating and strangling a chihuahua dog, but a dog who begs for chips? I had a similar reaction when my friend Ray poured big red soda over a white duck at a park once. The duck was staying red from head to its little webbed feet. At a museum once, I saw an exhibition entitled homosexual necrophilia among mallard ducks. 
It was about a specific case in which a male mallard duck approached the corpse of another male mallard duck. The duck had apparently flown headfirst into a window and was dead for a few minutes before the other duck approached and mounted him. While copulating, the duck, the duck continued to peck the back of the dead duck's head, I guess for good measure. While marveling at this exhibit, I couldn't help but think that maybe someday off in the far future, there will be exhibitions about humans and their obsessions with their pets. I imagine one of the exhibits will be a retrospective called My Life with Mindy. Through a series of photo, the life of Mindy the cat and her owner is displayed. Mindy as a newborn, Mindy's first trip abroad, and Mindy being pulled off life support. Every moment and every experience captured. And with their mouths agape, the people of the future will marvel at the exhibit and wonder, who are these people? So strange, so tragic. Thank you. Yeah.